I think I've learned new ways of enjoying life. Enjoying beauty in, in all its forms, including visual and oral. And then ultimately, I think, by linking those two very intimately, we're reaching into new realms of relative ecstasy. I mean, the thing that's dominated most people's perception of ecstasy has always been sexual experience. And intimacy, if intimacy means touching closely at many points, then th there is a more multivariable input through our sensory perception apparatus, proximity for activation of um, smell. Sight is obviously there if you care to open your eyes. And you can hear breathing if nothing else, not moans and groans and so on. So it's really a multi, multi synesthetic experience inherently making love. But as we approach this by linking into the same source, oral and visual phenomena, we begin to approach it. And it, this is, shouldn't be confused with virtual reality. That's always reality never stops. So virtual reality is always in competition with some residual amount of uh, actual reality. Whereas the enhancement of actual reality embraces everything that's happening in the moment. And so that means that ultimately there are things better than television that we can wean ourselves from and so on. And it's all waiting around the corner. It, it may require a little bit of extra pattern development of pattern recognition programs, slight shift in the educational process, and more time to enjoy life and reality. The end would be if people imitated me, mimicked me, and I didn't have the only bell garden. That's the end I'm looking for, really, is I hate being the only one because it makes me fearful that uh, it, the whole concept could get lost. And the whole concept is full of such delight. I mean, that's really the future, to stop consuming Mother Earth at a rate that can't be sustained. We've got to find new forms of enjoyment that are innocuous on, on Mother Earth. And one of the most innocuous is to intercept other people's leftover and throwaways. It's inexpensive in terms of money, uh, but you make up for it to a certain extent in time because this doesn't fit that and there's a lot of trial and error and you haven't got a manual to tell you the way. I might add there's very little alteration. Um, he not only goes after the sounding element, which is like, I'll make an analogy to the fruit of a tree, but he also looks for the trunk of a tree which might be a different kind of a pole, metal, that, that brings the uh, object off the ground. Or sometimes there's these little flower things. That, and who knows what they are? Maybe a carburetor on a jet or something that have little prongs sticking out. And, he, and then so he says, ah, if I put something on each one of those prongs, then I can get a way of creating uh, a, uh, a sense of space and movement in space. And uh, so there's all sorts of different aspects of this that don't really even have uh, the very, uh, you know, the, the actual sound in itself is, uh, is only part of it. But it's creating the whole object and seeing something maybe as a base, something as a trunk, something else as a branch. And then uh, from the string, probably, which would be the stem, hangs the fruit. Exactly, and with its own intrinsic rhythm. So it's got a kind of bounce to it, or a movement, a freedom of movement. And so the, what it becomes more and more for me, the bell garden, I don't care so much as I used to about this is a pure sound, this isn't this, I love this one, I don't like that one. It's actually the patterns that the sounds make with each other. <laughs> I might add that the pitch of these pieces of metal is quite complex when you, uh, musically speaking. Usually when we think of the regular instruments of the orchestra, the string instruments and the wind instruments, uh, uh, the, there's a harmonic series that goes either with the, the sound coming through a pipe or the string being vibrated. and that's a very uh, logical, physical, harmonic series that um, the science knows so well about. But in these pieces of metal, the sound is so complex that you might have two or three 
uh, fundamental frequencies that are vying for uh, <laughs> their the, in their own right, and you might hit it in one area, and one of those sounds might come out. Hitting in another area might send another frequency out. So uh, it's the, the complexity creates uh, something that's very interesting, and that is is that there's no necessarily right or wrong pitch that's uh, that's emanating from this because there's nothing else that's played in conventional music at all has anywhere near a sound. Regular instruments having this harmonic spectrum that that whether anybody knows it, they know that harmonic spectrum because it's built into the sounds that we're taught that we should be listening as far as what music is. And now we're introducing these complex sounds and there is no frame of reference as there is on the regular sounds. The fundamental frequency is uh, comes booming out and the others will follow behind in order. Spoke of this, Harry one, Potter, Harry Potter, Potter, one or two sentences in the Genesis of a Music, that um, it may be that in the future the timbres of metallic objects give rise to entirely new scales.